English physicist, cosmologist, astronomer, theorist and author Professor Dr. Stephen Hawking was born on January 8, 1942. At the age of eight, he went to St. Albans, 20 miles from London. At the age of 11, he enrolled at St. Albans School. After graduating, he attended his father's old school, Oxford University College. Although his father wanted him to pursue medicine, he liked mathematics. But the school did not have a math department. So he started studying physics instead. Three years later, he was awarded a first-class honors medal in natural sciences. Hawking then went to Cambridge to study cosmology. At the time, there was no cosmology at Oxford. At Cambridge, Dennis Sayama was appointed as his supervisor, although he wanted Fred Hoyle. After receiving his PhD, he became first a research assistant and then an assistant professor at Gonville and Caius College. After leaving the Institute of Astronomy in 1973, Stephen Hawking moved to the Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics. After 1979, he became Lucasian Professor of Mathematics in the Mathematics Department. This professorship was established in 1663 by Henry Lucas, a member of parliament at the university. It was first given to Isaac Barrow and then to Isaac Newton in 1669. Hawking studied the fundamental principles of the universe. Together with Roger Penrose, he showed that Einstein's general theory of relativity, which encompasses space and time, begins with the Big Bang and ends with black holes. This result suggested that quantum mechanics and the general theory of relativity should be unified. This was one of the greatest breakthroughs of the second half of the 20th century. One result of this unification was that black holes were not really black at all, but they emitted radiation, evaporated and became invisible. Another result was that the universe has an end and a limit. This meant that the beginning of the universe was entirely within the framework of scientific rules. In the early 1960s, at the age of 21, Stephen Hawking contracted the incurable disease of myotrophic lateral sclerosis. This disease, which paralyzes the nervous system by killing 80% of motor neurons over time but leaves the brain's mental activities untouched, condemned Hawking to live in a wheelchair. Since he had lost his voice since 1985, the famous scientist was able to communicate with people thanks to a computer installed in his chair that could convert text into sound. The famous physicist last gave a lecture titled The Origin of the Universe at the Vatican on November 25th and met with Pope Francis. Born in 1942 in Oxford, England, Stephen Hawking was known for his extensive work on quantum physics and black holes. At the Theory of Strings 2001 conference in Bombay, India, the famous physicist Stephen Hawking evaluated the next century and said that human beings will be able to settle on planets other than Earth within 100 years and that the perfect human being will be created within the next century thanks to genetic science. The famous British physicist, known for his work A Brief History of Time, informed 3,000 people about science in the future at the two-week conference in Bombay. Hawking, 59, said with certainty that within 100 years, human beings will be able to settle on planets other than Earth. I'm not saying that gene engineering is a good business, but in the future, whether we like it or not, there will probably be genetically engineered humans in the next millions of years, said Hawking, who is known as a scientist who predicts that our planet will be completely uninhabitable by 2800 if nature conservation measures are not given due importance. Babies will develop outside the womb at the Strings 2001 conference, held in Mumbai for the first time outside the US and Western Europe to discuss the Strings theory, which aims to help reconcile and explain the mysteries of the universe and seemingly contradictory theories in physical science, Hawking said that in the next century, 
Babies will be able to complete their fetal development in artificial environments outside the womb, whether we like it or not. Hawking stated that for long space travels, human beings have to develop their mental bodily abilities. If we do not destroy ourselves in the next century, we will be able to travel to planets and nearby stars, Hawking said at the conference. Stephen William Hawking, an expert on the Big Bang theory of the birth of the universe, the power of the subatomic world and black holes that swallow light in space, told the audience that it is unlikely that there is a race more advanced than humans on other planets, if there are superior species more advanced than humans, why haven't they spread to other galaxies? Or could it be that they don't visit us but leave us to our own devices and watch us lament our troubles? I doubt they would be so deferential to a lower form of life. Saying that genetic engineering should be limited to economics in plants and animals to better feed the Earth, Hawking said, DNA is fundamental to all life on Earth. The human race and its DNA will rapidly increase in complexity. Emphasizing that the rapid increase in the world population must be prevented by family and population planning, Hawking reminded that the world population, which is approaching 7 billion, doubles every 40 years. At this rate, by the year 2600, all the people in the world will be squeezed shoulder to shoulder, Hawking said, adding that the electricity production that could feed this population could heat the earth to the point of turning it red hot. It has been reported that in the next new century, with even more modern methods, humans will be repaired and renewed by manipulating their genes. British astrophysicist Stephen Hawking said that he believes that, as a result of gene manipulation, humans in a few centuries will have a different appearance than they do now, because scientists are now rapidly unraveling the secrets of DNA. Hawking defended the following views, I don't believe in science fiction movies like Star Trek with people who look like people today. There are calls for a ban on genetic engineering of humans. But I don't think it will ever be banned. For economic reasons, animals and plants will be allowed to be genetically engineered. And one day someone will tamper with human genes too. Unless we live in a totalitarian world, it is inevitable that someone, somewhere, will try to improve human beings by recreating them. Before I finish the video, here are 10 things about Stephen Hawking that will amaze you one. At school, Hawking didn't do very well. At the age of 9, his grades were among the worst in the class. He struggled to bring his grades up to average but never more than that. Two, even in those days, they called him Einstein. Despite his poor grades, his peers seemed to realize he was a future genius, judging by the fact that his nickname was Einstein. Later in life, he scored highly in the Oxford University scholarship exams and went on to study at the university. Three, he found biology obscure, Stephen Hawking loved math and physics from an early age. Hawking was not interested in biology. He said he found biology too vague, too rote. 4. He was on the rowing team even before his physically disabling illness was diagnosed. Hawking was not a very large man. He was a coxswain on the rowing team. People who were not such big people did not row in the rowing team, but served in the coxswain position to give direction and speed. 5. ALS Diagnosis At 21, Hawking gradually began to show signs of staggering and general clumsiness. He went to the hospital for tests to find out what was wrong with him. There he was diagnosed with a myotrophic lateral sclerosis (ALS). ALS is a neurological disease that causes patients to lose voluntary muscle control. Doctors told him he probably only had a few years to live. 6. His theories and work on quantum mechanics One of Hawking's most important achievements was theorizing in 1983 that the universe has no boundaries. 
In order to understand the shape and nature of the universe, Hawking and Hartle combined quantum mechanics and general relativity to show that the universe is a contained existence, yet has no boundaries. 7. He believed in the existence of aliens. In 2008, at NASA's 50th anniversary celebration, Hawking was the keynote speaker. 8. Our future is in space. Due to global warming and nuclear war, Hawking has stated that the future of the human race, if it is to be a long future, will be in space. 9. Uncomplicated enough to say he was wrong, in 2004, Hawking admitted that his fellow scientists had won a 1997 bet about black holes and that he was wrong. Hawking was a gentleman enough to admit that he was wrong, and in 2004 he admitted that he was wrong. 10. His books. One of the most unexpected features of Hawking's CV is undoubtedly that he is a children's book author. In 2007, he and his daughter Lucy wrote the book Jorgo's Secret Key to the Universe. The second book in the series was published in 2009 under the title Jorgo's Cosmic Treasure Hunt. Thank you for watching this far. For more such videos, you can subscribe to the channel and like the video. See you again soon.